Welcome to our IFTA um, interview with uh, our speaker, um, Isaac Newton, technical analyst from Singapore. Uh, this will be part of the, uh, his presentation will be part of the offline uh, resource for, uh, for many of you members. Welcome, Isaac. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Uh, it's really great to, to be here, you know, um, not being the first time talking to you, but being the first time being part of the bigger picture, uh, especially contributing to the IFTA community as a larger picture. Uh, very excited to be here. So thanks for having me. Pleasure. It's, it, we're excited to, to have you on board in terms of your contribution and what a very interesting theme you chose uh, to look at the, the process that you've adopted all of these years in terms of multi time frames uh, and uh, correlations. Uh, before we dive into that, if you could give us a little bit of background as to uh, what you do and how you do what you do. Okay, so um, just a bit of what I do is uh, I first started um, with technical analysis uh, about six years ago. That was my first foray into trading. And I realized that just staring at little rectangles on a screen is not going to help. So I decided to really... Uh, commit myself to understanding technical analysis. Uh, so that's a bit about how I started and why I committed to learning about it is because over time I realized that uh, markets are generally inefficient, right? Um, price doesn't go from one level and immediately jumps to its intrinsic level. It normally goes in a zigzag manner, right? And it's within these zigzags that we can actually take advantage and uh, extract profits right from from the markets so because of this uh, i committed myself to learning technical analysis and, and and six years later here i am right so cut the long story short i mean i can go on and on about why i really want to learn about technical analysis and why it's my passion but um, professionally i was working at a firm at bbsp and what we do is that we provide uh, bespoke uh, technical strategies to institutions, right? Uh, we have some of the most well-known uh, financial institutions that were our clients. And we'll talk to their traders or even their portfolio managers on a daily basis to provide them a market color, a, market, a daily market outlook, right? And then having left BBSP, I went on to uh, another firm at Everest Fortune Group and now what the, the main client that we serve, well, less institutions, we do actually serve brokerages and also their clients. So I deal a bit more with the retail crowd now. Uh, and what's special about that is that I'm bringing the institution experience and the professional experience from dealing with uh, really, really smart traders, uh, really, really brilliant people. And I'm trying to value, value add the, to the retail crowd, right? Um, how the institutions think and how really technical analysis should be done, well, which is really interesting that um, the topic that, 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 I, that I have actually presented on is multi time frame analysis and intermarket correlation, which I think the retail market hardly looks at, but it's so important. It's, it's so important that it's actually part of my daily discipline to to, to do when I'm doing my analysis on the markets. It, it's great that you're part of this uh, convergence between, uh, I mean, uh, the, in the professional space between institutional and retail and closing that gap or building that bridge even. Um, I mean, a quick point on that, it, as you've already made that crossover on the client side, what do you notice about any crossovers or, or, or just the, the evolution of kind of trader think on both sides of that, uh, that bridge? I, interesting that you, you asked that question, Ron. Um, but I, if you ask me, I think coming over from the institution into more retail side, um, back then when dealing with private banks, right, um, you, you, you have people that think really, really long term. Right, they, they are looking for trading and investment strategies that are long term, three to six months, uh, one to three years, or even five to 10 years. And then when you move over to the retail side, you're looking at people who are relying on short term trading, right, to generate profits. 
and and it's a very different mindset. I, I would think the 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 institutional side and the bigger money side of things are a bit more structured, whereas the retail side is a bit more wild wild west. And um, what I really would like to be able to eventually contribute is to help the the, the retail side to to start thinking in a more structured manner, um, and and and. And in that, hope to also improve the overall standards of technical analysis. I think um, ever since the, the breakout of the virus and with people working from home and finding more spare time on their hands, or even then those who have their income streams hit by um, the loss of jobs, right? Um, people are starting to think of um, trading as an alternative means of uh, generating income. It's not the only means. I mean, you have... Um, e-commerce, there, there are a lot of other things you can do, right? I, I do know of people who do survey full times at full time at home and they, they do get sort of a kickback a discount for the companies that they're doing surveys for. Um, but trading is, um, is growing to be one of a very um, important side income in, in the world going forward, especially with um, low interest rates and depressed wages um, across the world. Um, uh, struggling economy. I mean, the economy seems to be recovering, but we really do not know whether this is a real, real recovery or it's really a, a empty recovery only to wait for a bigger drop later. So uh, there really is a cry for, for proper skills in learning how to trade, in learning how to look at the markets. And I think technical analysis can sort of fill that volume, uh, the vacuum proper technical analysis that is. So with a wider demographic of interest in our discipline of technical analysis, one of the talking points that we uh, shared uh, ahead of this discussion was the foundation of technical analysis and how that maybe fits in with your view of uh, multi time frame and correlation framework, the subject of your presentation. How would you combine that or ground it into the TA foundation? Well, I, I think first and foremost, um, technical analysis, uh, we, we have to come, personally, I feel we have to come to an understanding that uh, technical analysis is about a trader or investor being able to react to the market at any given point in time, right? Because ultimately, you're looking at a price chart, right? And having said that, then we need to be able to go through, cycle through the different time frames to know how the markets are eventually going to move on the long term. And then we can try to, I mean, on the long term, right? I, I always say the markets, and we all know markets never move in a straight line. It always moves in a zigzag manner to ultimately get to where it wants. Um, many theories behind this. Um, it can be the Dow theory. It can be the Elliott wave theory. But ultimately, Markets slowly move to their intrinsic value. And, and, and by knowing the, the, di the general direction of the trend, we can actually cycle down to the lower time frame to be sure whether um, we can find these key levels in the market through the use of technical analysis to react, like I said, to react to, to the market and to play the direction. So multi-time multi frame analysis for me builds on firstly understanding um, proper technical analysis, the idea of studying charts and price action. And then we go through the different time frames to value add to form a more, co more coherent picture of the markets. Now, how much value does it add from a risk management point of view? So, I mean, most people come into the market uh, wanting to trade, invest, or learn about technical analysis in order to make money. But of course, the flip side of that is risk. And, and so how does multi-time frame analysis correlation overlays actually help mitigate risk or just optimize that, that workflow? Okay, so um, let me break it down into two parts your question. I'll first answer how we mitigate, how we can mitigate risk um, using multi-time frame analysis. And then after that, I'll explain how we can mitigate risk using uh, intermarket correlation, right? So multi-time frame analysis works because if, you know, we, we always hear the trend is your friend, 
right? The trend is your friend until it ends or never ever catch a falling knife, which means you don't keep buying the market as long as it keeps falling, right? So <clears throat> when we do multi time frame analysis and we start with the, normally we use a top-down approach, right? When, when we start with the bigger time frame, we get a general view of where the market is trending, whether the market is in a long-term uptrend or whether the market is in a long-term downtrend. Now, if the market is in a long-term uptrend and on the shorter time frame, we find an opportunity to go short. Okay, so again, market long-term uptrend, but short-term, we find an opportunity to go short. Now, we have to, with, with multi-time frame analysis, we have to keep the bigger picture in mind, right? So we have to tell ourselves, okay, long-term, the market is uptrend, but I'm trying to go short. So to mitigate that risk, my position that I use, the position size that I use to enter the market will be naturally smaller than the usual size that I enter with the market, right? So normally, if, if let's say, for example, right, uh, retail traders like to use lots, right? So if let's say normally I enter 10 lots, right, I would actually manage my risk by saying maybe I go in with five lots instead because I'm playing against the bigger trend. Now, if they don't want to reduce their position, position size, sorry, what, what they can do is then they can actually uh, keep a tight rein on their stop loss, right? Be, 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 be very sure that um, you leave your stop loss with enough room to breathe, but also have that discipline to keep your stop loss tight enough to know that if your trade moves against you, you know for sure that the market is resuming its longer term uptrend. So that is how multi-time frame analysis actually helps me to mitigate my risk or at least manage my risk, right? So I go in with a smaller position size. Now, the second part of the question is intermarket correlation. So let's say uh, long-term, uh, I am going, I see long-term, I see gold prices going up, right? No, so, so we know that on a monthly right now, gold seems to be making a new high. Uh, however, it's making a short-term pullback. So, I know that on the short term, I would like to short gold despite the monthly showing it making new highs. So, I will already enter with a smaller position size. Intermarket correlation will tell me that, hey, Isaac, the dollar is strengthening lately, right? Because of the elections that is surrounding the, the, the I mean, the, the news that's surrounding the elections that's going to happen in November. And further, there's also the fiscal stimulus talk um, that the White House is supposedly having with, uh, with, with, with the Democrats and there seems to be no, no agreement on the outcome, right? So that, that poses a bit of a risk to the market, right? So intermarket correlations, gold and the DXY, right? So traditionally gold and the dollar they move in opposing directions they are negatively correlated right uh, because gold is usually priced in the dollar so if i'm going to go short on gold on the short term i i i will actually watch out for dxy also in the same time frame and the dollar if the dollar is going to strengthen due to the elections uh, maybe President Trump is going to get re-elected again, right? So it's, it's, that is always taken as a sign good for the market, right? So in the event, I'm not saying I'm a supporter, but in the event that happens, then um, it makes sense that my shot on goal it is, a good, is a good bet that I will take, right? However, if it seems like um, the fiscal stimulus is not going to work out or um, Vice President Biden is going to get elected as the next president, and the dollar might weaken, okay, then perhaps instead of shorting gold, I may want to go neutral on gold, stay out of it, or if I'm really stubborn and have itchy fingers, right, I may want to take an even smaller position size than I already am. So putting one, one and one together, um, having multi time frame view of the market and having an intermarket uh, correlation, intermarket analysis, this actually helps me to form a very coherent picture of, of, of how my trade uh, could probably work out and what I can do to not harm my own uh, profitability and my own uh, bottom line, so to say. Now, Isaac, you, you're, you're very much kind of, uh, I mean, 
based in Singapore, but also in with the uh, community there in terms of the traders and investors, uh, client side, and, and just general TA society uh, members. What's, what's your view in terms of the journey for newcomers into, into the scene? And uh, you yourself and your journey, how did uh, things like, for example, practical experience and some of the actual work in doing the CFT exam help uh, you along the way? I, I think uh, the, the trouble with technical analysis is that there is too many resources. There are too many resources out there, right? Um, it's good that they are free. It's bad because it's unchecked and no one really knows whether it's proper, right? And, and that's the trouble, right? So um, when I first started six years ago into technical analysis, um, I was reading this book about... Um, Naked Charts, right? Very interesting title, Naked Charts, right? I'm not going to point out the author, anything, right? Not, not to shame or anything. But um, the terminologies in the books, uh, in, in the book was very different from the proper terminologies that the greater TA uh, circle would know. So instead of, um, instead of a dragonfly doji, for example, right? Uh, I'll be given like, Oh, this is a kangaroo pin. <laughs> so it's a very different name, very fanciful way. Very, it's more marketing than more proper foundation building. And I think that the struggle for newcomers coming to learn about technical analysis, especially uh, in Singapore, uh, I'm not sure in other parts of the world, but, but I see it more prevalent in Singapore, is that um, there are a lot of marketers that um, would like to repackage technical analysis and try to make it a bit more flamboyant uh, and push it out. Now, there, there is no harm in making things attractive and repackaging them. But I think what is really damaging is um, having the idea of technical analysis repackaged in a way that there is no proper foundation building like there is no understanding of the Dow theory. There is no understanding of the different kind of biases that really takes place um, when we are doing technical analysis, when we are trading the markets. Um, you know, psychology is a very big thing, right, Ron? I'm sure. I'm sure you you will know that. It's I think it's your pet topic, actually. Yeah. What am I? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So. I think for a newcomer into the TA scene, uh, especially in Singapore, there really is a lack of a proper uh, focus point, right? Or, or a point of focus to really learn uh, technical analysis. So uh, doing the CFT examination has actually helped me um, build a proper base, right? Um, a proper foundation. Uh, years back, I had a lecturer tell me, um, I was actually quite weak in a certain subject back in uni and I had a lecturer tell me, you know, Isaac, if you're weak in this topic, what do you have to do? And I said, oh, I need to work harder. And the lecturer actually told me, no, you tear down the entire understanding that you have and you even tear down the foundation and you lay the foundation proper and then you build it up again. And, and that really struck a chord with me because um, I think if you really want a proper understanding of technical analysis, you should go to a respectable body, right? To, to, to learn technical analysis like the IFTA and, and at least clear the CFTE to, to get an, a, a, a basic foundation, a solid foundation so that no matter where you learn your technical analysis after that, unorthodox, orthodox, right? Whatever ideas you have, fanciful indicators like moving average ribbon, that kind of thing it's easier for you to unlearn because you still have the basic foundation. But if you do not even have the basic foundation, right, you're just learning off the internet, all this free and not sure whether it's proper um, technical analysis resource, then I think really you're going to have to put in a lot more effort to unlearn and then to relearn. Great insights, a very objective and, and uh, honest experience. Thank you so much, Isaac. And uh, I encourage uh, all people to, to watch the offline presentation when they can make some time. Thank you and look forward to connecting again. Thanks a lot, Ron. Look forward to connecting again as well.